Hi, everybody. Um, we're going to get started in one moment. We realize that everybody's entering into the, the room, so we're going to give you one minute to, to kind of get into the room and get started. Um, today, uh, we're going to be talking about chemical and molecular engineering. Um, so uh, as we are waiting for our guests to arrive, um, we will um, hold out for a minute just to make sure that everyone is in. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And we'll get started in one moment. All right, thank you very much for joining us tonight. My name is Ryan Donnelly, and my coworker Amanda Mills is here as well. We're both assistant directors in the admissions office uh, in undergraduate admissions. Um, today is about chemical and molecular engineering, and we have Dr. Meng. And Dr. Natoras to talk us to talk to us about uh, chemical and molecular engineering and sort of the ins and outs of the program and also um, what makes our program unique. So, uh, without any further delay, Dr. Meng, if you wanted to take over. Okay. Uh, so, uh, good evening, everyone. I'll just quickly introduce myself. Um, my name is Yuzi Meng. As both Steve and I are lecturers at uh, Stony Brook, in the we're housed within the Department of Material Science and chemical engineering, but we are part of the chemical engineering part of the umbrella. And um, I'm actually going to let Steve, Dr. Natoda, start the presentation and I will um, resume halfway through. So go ahead, Steve. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, as Dr. Meng, my name is Steph, Steve for Stefanos Natodas. Um, so I'm chemical engineer by training. And we, so what we're going to talk about today is um, how the department is structured and how the, the chemical and molecular engineering program, to be more specific, um, uh, is also structured. Uh, so here you just see some examples of research activities in the program and actually part of the core courses like reaction engineering. Uh, you see 3D polymer printing. Uh, drug delivery system. So these are all some of the very exciting and interesting research topics you can undertake as, um, as an undergraduate student uh, in our program. You can continue uh, with the next slide. So we can switch to, yes, thank you. So this is um, uh, the, the CME faculty. Uh, so we see we have um, uh, 10 in, in like 11 uh, instructors, uh, faculty uh, and technical staff, and also two, the, the two staff you see. Um, uh, so I'll start with the staff at, at the bottom. It's, we have departmental administrator, Mrs. Roy. We have undergraduate program a coordinator, uh, Sam Riccardi, and we also have undergraduate uh, graduate program coordinator, but this is for graduate studies. Uh, and you can see uh, the different uh, different professors and faculty uh, of the program, including me and Dr. Meng. Um, so we taught, we teach different uh, courses in chemical engineering, and also, as I said, there's a variety of research projects you can uh, undertake in our program. Next slide, please. Uh, so here you see um, the external advisory board, the members of our AAP board. So it's we also have this uh, external advisory board, which consists of um, mainly uh, from professionals from the industry, uh, mostly chemical engineers, not so they're not uh, people which work in the department. So we need their input. It's very important to know how the, the program uh, can be advanced further, uh, how can be further improved. Uh, and also it's, it's, good, it, it's good to have a correlation with the industry, uh, just, to, just it helps us shaping uh, the chemical engineers of the future. So we have uh, professionals from a variety of, um, of industries, uh, and uh, in including petrochemical industry, energy industry, um, uh, cosmetics, and also uh, lubricants. Uh, 
so including ExxonMobil, Lester Lauder, and also we have uh, we have different uh, professionals from a more uh, nonprofit organization, also from academic environment. Uh, and this is uh, Dr. Shah is uh, the chair of uh, external advisory board. Uh, works at Cochlear Instrument Company. Uh, so another thing we do with the members of advisory board uh, uh, is to, to have a strong uh, correlation with our students. So their students work as interns in some of these companies. So the Cochlear Instrument Company uh, has a lot of, C of CME uh, interns, students from our program. Uh, and Dr. Shah is, is, uh, having, is hosting interns from my program for several years now. Um, so all of these members of the board have, you know, long-standing experience in chemical engineering and also in the industry. So it's really important. And so, as I said, we have like daily and very frequent interaction with them. And also we seek their advice in several issues related to our program, in chemical engineering in general. Next slide, please. So the program uh, started, as you can see here, in 2004. Uh, it's fully accredited since 2009. Uh, so we work closely with ABED. It's Accreditation Board for Engineering and Technology. Uh, so this board um, checks the quality of the program, and it's an accreditation for all uh, engineering programs uh, in U.S. universities. So it's, so it's a process all the, the engineering programs go through. And the enrollment in the last, uh, like actually the one here, the year before last, uh, was around 120 students for the four, total of the four years, from freshman to senior. So these are the statistics for the class of 2022, 20, the last class I graduated. 35 students graduated. So this is the average number of students, 30 to 35 we have every year. The ratio of female students was, actually these female students were more than male students, 54%, over 46 of the male students. The average GPA was, is quite, it's quite high. It's around 3.7 uh, uh, for the year 2022. And the overall average GPA uh, for the last uh, 11 years is 3.5, which is a very good GPA, since most of the uh, industry that hires uh, chemical engineers want at least a 3.5, uh, like around 3.4, 3.5, and have this as average. Another recent feature of our program, it's the accelerated uh, bachelor master degree program. So it's a five-year program. So in four years, you get the bachelor in the fifth year, you get your master's. So a lot of our students choose that. Uh, so you, you save a lot of time. Um, instead of doing two additional year for your master's after graduation from the bachelor, you do one year where you can do like a very good research project in the fifth year. Uh, and you reduce the normal time required to complete both degrees. Uh, it's a very good, um, Besides the quality of the research projects we have here in the department, we also collaborate with external institutes like the Brookhaven National Lab, uh, one of the uh, US national labs. We have a strong collaboration with this uh, lab and a lot of undergraduate students. Some of undergraduate students work there and also you can continue with your master program and also maybe have the opportunity to work in the Brookhaven National Lab. Um, so these are some of the recent activities you see there besides the, the courses you're taking and the qualifications you get as a chemical engineering graduate. You also uh, build up strong interactions with your classmates and other uh, CME students from other years. Uh, we have um, uh, a very big uh, student chapter of the American Institute of Chemical Engineers which is the, the biggest association of chemical engineers around the world, professionals from the industry, the academia, and also students, uh, members. It's free also for, it's for the students. So you don't have to pay any membership fee. Um, so they, this uh, chapter, the ICHE organizes a lot of activities here. And also there's a 
we participate in conferences, the regional conference and the national conference, uh, so two, twice a year. Um, we also, the members, some of the members of the club, the chapter participate in teams which compete like the chemical competition. Uh, you can see here uh, from the chemical competition on the top left, um, the team works in building a car uh, that works on, batter on a battery and uses a chemical reaction to move a specific distance over a specific amount of time. Um, our team came first in the regional uh in uh, in um uh in in april and now we it's going to participate in the virtual competition in in uh, this coming saturday uh which is the national competition uh also there's other activities organizing engineering in the kitchens you can see where you you can see through like you know like uh, they, they simulate some chemical engineering concepts through and other activities that take place in the kitchen. Uh, we also they also invite um, different speakers from the industry. They organize events. It's, it's a very good chapter. So there are also many other organizations you can participate for engineers while you're at Stony Brook. Well, there is a CME video. I don't know if Dr. Meng, you're going to show it later or you're going to present it now. I think I will give Amanda and Ryan the link. We can send um, the okay. the video link to all the families. Yeah, that presents some of you know activities on the, the program. Actually, part of the program, the CME. So, the next next slides. Uh, the next slide, please. Yes. Okay, this is, as I said, the first place uh, the team uh, received in the in the regional competition in April. Uh, so you have to 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 actually to qualify through this regional. It's really the three the, the, the first four places uh, give you the ticket to the national. And for us, it has happened six times within the last nine years. So you see the team from last year. Some of them continue also this year. Uh, you know, uh, as we have, um, Dr. Meng can talk about this um, if you'd like. Uh, we have the alumni sports series um, that our Dr. Meng organized, so you can talk more about it if you like. Okay, sure. Dr. Meng. All right. Uh, thanks, Steve. I'd be happy to. So the series actually um, started during COVID times around, you know, 2020. Uh, where I wanted our students to feel more connected, even though we were uh, mostly remote or in uh, some kind of hybrid learning experiment uh, environment. So I started reaching out to our alumni and we have a terrific body of alumni, very engaged, very active. Uh, they just want to give back to uh, their, their alma mater. And these are uh, the first uh, speakers that we invited over Zoom and they just spoke about, you know, how, uh, what it felt like to get resumes out, to try to get an interview or internship and what was their first job like. And students uh, really responded to that. And it's been a great series. And we've been running it every semester since. And we've had alumni, so uh, we've had uh, Gerksing from um, and we have um, Norvika Campbell, uh, Joe and Brogno at Pfizer, and um, Shui, I, back then she was at BAE Systems. I think she recently <clears throat> started a, a position at a new company in the Boston area. Uh, they, they were just terrific. Uh, here's kind of a cross-section view of our alumni. So this is the LinkedIn group uh, that we, uh, we started the SBU, uh, Stony Brook University Chemical and Molecular Engineering Alumni Student Group. Uh, and we, uh, every year, the membership has been growing about 10%. And every semester we have between you know, three to four speakers to come give a talk. Um, and the last, uh, last year we had Stephanie Song from 3M, um, Christian Abraham from Corning, Andrea Sarmiento, from Nestle Purina and Asim Ratu from Apple. So it was a very eclectic 
um, uh, a, a range of companies that were represented and students were really interested. And we were lucky to have some of them uh, come to give a talk in person. That was really great. Uh, so here's some of the um, areas that are represented by our alumni. So basically it tells you what our students are getting jobs in, you know, and currently in the last, I would say two to three years. So the, this dark blue section, a lot of them are in uh, cosmetics and personal care and energy. Um, there are some in consumer goods uh, like Johnson Johnson, pharmaceuticals, uh, in addition to um, Pfizer, our students, our alumni are working in Merck, um, Avi, uh, different <clears throat> companies within that sector and are very successful as well. And uh, this is a kind of by um, percentage. So a lot of our students do go on to graduate school, either master's or master's and PhD. So higher education takes um, uh, a large component. And a lot of students get hired into the pharmaceutical sector, uh, industrial engineering, biotechnology, consumer goods, cosmetics, et cetera, across the nation. Um, so here is just a kind of a, a list of specializations. Specializations are kind of like concentrations. So even though your official degree is chemical engineering, you can concentrate on a sub-discipline that you're interested in. So chemical engineers are uh, not only good at math and chemistry and physics, they're also really good at designing processes. And that's what the employers look for, right? It's not just someone who uh, gets straight A's in organic chemistry. So we teach our students how to design complicated processes and how to operate those processes that are needed in the industry. Um, so some students want to work on materials, different kinds of materials, materials for energy, materials for biotechnology. Some are in interested in nanotechnology and polymer. Uh, my background is more biomedical and food engineering. So I teach courses in tissue engineering. Some of our students will take classes in other parts of the campus, like the business school. Uh, they want to start their own company or work as a project manager after graduating. And we also have custom specializations in case a student has you know, a strong idea of what they want to concentrate in. Uh, and here are just the requirements. Um, so your first two years as a freshman and sophomore, you take classes with many other students outside of your major. That's your basic foundational courses in calculus, chemistry, physics, programming, uh, and then junior and senior year is when you really concentrate on your chemical engineering courses. So all of a sudden you're not in these huge lecture halls anymore. You are in a smaller classrooms. Uh, our largest uh, classes in um, the last three years, Steve, I think there are about 35 students within the major. Sometimes we have students outside of the major. I don't know how large is your 101 class. So the, the introduction to chemical and molecular engineering class, mm -hmm. CME 101, now it's around 40, 43 students. 43 students. Uh, the, right. So Steve teaches a 101 class where he uh, hosts guest speakers, uh, chemical engineers in different uh, areas in industry and academia. And by the time we get our juniors, uh, we have about 30, usually between, I think, 30 And which is a good size. Uh, we have a, a wonderful faculty to student ratio, and we're really one of the smallest programs on the Stony Brook campus, which is pretty big. Okay, so we uh, recently acquired some sizable um, pilot plant units, and we're waiting um, for our new pilot plant to be uh, to be constructed so we can move these units there. So we're kind of excited about that. We want to share. Um, so these are small, the, the mini benchtop reactors. We teach our juniors in the spring semester how to operate them. You can uh, uh, control an experiment um, at a temperature or pressure of your desired value and carry out an experiment using that. And the pilot plant units are not yet 
operational. Again, we don't have the space for it, waiting for a new space to be built. Um, I'm actually going to switch over to my other presentation to show you a little bit about our new pilot plant space. Okay, so I want to talk about the lab classes. Um, so I teach the juniors uh, a sequence, a uh, 310, 320 sequence. Let me see, I have my pointer. So tell, let me know, Steve, if you're able to see my screen after I share my switch my presentation. Yes, okay. yes, I can see it. Okay, so this was an update for last spring, and that was the first full year that we had that didn't involve any remote teaching. So we start, um, you know, the first weeks in the fall, just showing the students how to use tools, wrenches, screwdrivers, and how to identify pipe fittings, because most of the time the chemical engineers do uh, is making connections and checking for leaks. So we teach them how to do that. And then we show them how to use one of those compressed um, setups, compressed gas setups, uh, the mini benchtop reactor. We do a little bit of programming, lab view, where you can automate data collection uh, using a computer. Uh, and we do experiments that correlate with our theory classes, Reynolds number, friction laws and pipe flow, uh, fluidized bed, et cetera. And in the spring, we con conduct longer experiments uh, that involves some kind of reaction and uh, heat and mass transfer. Um, so from lab, and this is, um, that was a quick video of LabVIEW data being automated. And at the end of each semester, students uh, have a lot of opportunities to present to each other. And in their senior year, they present to our external advisory board panel. There's some, oh, okay, the comments are from Mandarin Line. So here again, some snapshots of um, experiments that we did last year, a browning reaction that is very important in the food industry, a uh, heat exchanger experiment. Students had to um, assemble a heat exchanger, a simple uh, a heat exchanger that runs either counter flow or parallel flow and use LabVIEW to automate data collection. Uh, and some new instruments that we acquired last year that will be introduced in the upcoming semester. So here's the, um, the plan for our new pilot plan. Our current teaching lab is housed in heavy engineering and one bus stop away is the new space. And the construction is uh, was halted during uh, the COVID-19 um, pandemic and now it's being resumed. So here's the, the layout. So right in the middle will be our future pilot plant and I have a zoomed in view. So where students will enter, there's a vestibule to um, where they can set their belongings down, their lockers. There's a machine shop here. And then the larger lab is where we keep our units, keep our pilot plant, uh, the wetter wall absorption unit, um, liquid liquid extraction. Um, so these are the chemical fume hoods and their tables that uh, are movable. So students can you know, change the configuration as needed. So that's, I just wanted to share that with you to give an update. And then we can go back to our um, previous presentation about um, research presentation. Our students in the senior year all uh, a two semester a sequence of senior research with a faculty advisor. And in spring, in uh, e either uh, end of April or beginning of May, they all present a poster at the Eureka Symposium. And in addition to that, they complete um, a publication um, that is uh, will be published in JUICER, the Journal of Undergraduate Chemical and Engineering Research. And it's a wonderful opportunity to network and see what other students have been working on. <clears throat> okay, all right, so, and our, I'm very proud to, you know, to brag a little bit about our students and alumni. Not only are they great researchers and scholars, they uh, have um, come a long way 
they are working in almost every sector um, that you can you can think of. Uh, so in addition to graduate school, they are um, these are just um, some of our current alumni, the companies uh, where our current alumni are working. So tradi traditional chemical engineering companies like Dow, uh, I think our first alum was actually, uh, she said DuPont. So Kohler is a, a local Long Island instrumentation company. Um, there are several alumni at pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer, Merck, Amneal, Bristol, uh, Meyer Squibb, Avi. There are food and beverage services. Uh, they're hiring our chemists as well in Heiser Bush, Arizona. Um, several students have uh, branched out into high tech. So Intel, Google, uh, Hewlett Packard, Apple. Uh, a lot of them are at prestigious uh, graduate institutions. Um, as you can see, some of them have gone on to banking. Some of them are working on Wall Street. And uh, these are just some examples of our um, wonderful network of alumni. Okay, and our some of our recent graduates and our current students um, have received um, several prestigious scholarships. Jamie DeCoster from the Department of Defense and one of our seniors has um, received the uh, Stony Brook Eureka Research Scholarship. Our students present in a lot of conferences um, and I think this year they were very happy to present in person at the, at the AQ conference they just came back from. These are just some of the titles of senior thesis projects from last year, class of 2022. And our faculty actively advise all of our students. So we all take part. Um, we talk to our students from anything about how to apply for jobs to what kind of specializations are best for them. And uh, as Steve mentioned, now we have a five-year program where you can um, get both a bachelor's and a master's degree in chemical and molecular engineering from Stony Brook in five years, which is, uh, which is a really great time and money saving strategy. So that pretty much concludes our presentation. Um, Professor Ted Koga is our undergraduate program director. He uh, knows a lot more about this program than I do. Sam is our uh, undergraduate program coordinator. Uh, she is a good person to ask about what classes, how to register for classes, um, and you know, how to uh, talk to our professors. Um, but both Steve and I are, are happy uh, to answer any questions that you may have right now. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, if you have questions about any of the topics discussed today, please put them in the Q&A. You'll find the Q&A right at the bottom of your screen. Open it up. If you have a question, please share that. Um, earlier, we had talked, or um, Dr. Ming had talked a little bit about class size. They've talked about ways you can get experience. So if you do have questions, we can answer those. Um, oh, so we have an, an anonymous question for you. Um, I heard that it's extremely difficult to transfer from the general colleges to the College of Engineering and Applied Science. Um, in my application, I indicated philosophy as my major of interest, and now I've developed an interest in engineering. Is it too late to make the switch? So I can actually answer that for you. Um, it actually depends on whether your application has got started, gone through the start of the review process. So what you should do is send a well-written email to the undergraduate admissions office that explains exactly that, that you originally were interested in majoring in philosophy, but now you have a new interest and is it too late for your application to be reviewed for that new major? And they'll let you know um, if the um, admissions team has started the review of your application or whether it hasn't and whether they can update that for you. Um, I hope that answers your question. Uh, let's see if we have any other questions coming in. Um, 
We always get questions about, um, at least in the admissions office, we get a lot of questions about what the students are like. And, it, you know, everyone's really smart. It's very intimidating. Are they going to feel welcome? Is there community, um, you know, amongst the undergrads? <laughs> um, is that something from your experience teaching the undergrads that um, you've seen? I want to show you um, in the corner of our LinkedIn, actually the banner for our LinkedIn. Oh, I think I, I meant to go back to the other presentation. So on our LinkedIn group page, we have a photo that I use for our banner. And it has the word Ohana on there. Oh, I thought I made, okay. I think I just have to go back. Let me go back. So the word Ohana is Hawaiian for family. So that I love that picture because um, and during our, I think it was 2017, uh, the graduation, I uh, hear it is. The students made that blackboard uh, and they, they, they all um, the Hawaiian language really close knit. Students are great. Um, they are not uh, intimidating at all. They're very down to earth. Most of our students are local. They're from the Long Island or New York City area. They commute. They're, they're hardworking. A lot of them have part-time jobs, you know, they, to save up, um, just like, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of us. So, and they work extremely hard. And at the same time, they appreciate uh, each other and they appreciate all the help. So I, I, I really appreciate I'm grateful for that every day um, I get to go and teach these students and they're wonderful students. Thank you. So our next question is also really more of an admissions question, but I'm happy to answer it. Um, if there's no room in the engineering major that I applied to, would you consider offering me another major in the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences? Um, we actually don't do that at Stony Brook. Um, I think that some other institutions will do that, but we consider you specifically for the major you've applied to um, and not any of the others. At Stony Brook, um, just for an example, last year we received over 40,000 applications for admission. So we're just reviewing for the one major that you indicated on your application, but thank you for the question. Uh, let's see. Um, anyone else have a question? Feel free to put it in the Q&A. Um, we do get a lot of questions about the the, the kind of introductory course and, um, you know, how, it, how competitive that is. And if it's something that, you know, when students are taking other prerequisite courses along with the introductory first year course, is it manageable? Um, is that something that you hear a lot of students that you work with say like that it was manageable to you know be taking calculus and the the introduction to CME course along with their other um, academic courses. Uh, I, I can answer question? that. Yes, I can answer that. So this is a course offered in the in the freshman's fall semester. So it's a manageable course because you have an introduction to the concepts of chemical engineering, like very basic uh, introduction to the different concepts. So you know what you expect, uh, what one expects from chemical engineers, but what chemical engineers can do out in the field. But, as, but since there is a, a variety of different, uh, of different fields of chemical engineering work and different roles can have in the industry, um, there are different things that explain through this course, but they, all of them are very basic. Uh, so we don't have like calculations. We don't have problems, difficult problems to solve. It's more conceptual. Um, so we're introduced to um, how you research uh, for a topic, how you do literature search. Um, we help the students build up their resume, their engineering resume. 
and we have a lot of we have a lot of guest speakers from the industry and academia and also professors from the our department uh, mostly chemical engineers and alumni where they explain how they have developed their career different types of careers in chemical engineering uh, so for the students to understand you know the the capability of a chemical engineering so they don't have to solve like difficult problems they don't have to do calculations uh, they just have to it's more conceptual and it's more like understanding of the major and the role of chemical engineer out in the industry so it's thank you um, we have a question uh, does stony brook um, how, what is our scheduling system? So at Stony Brook, we have two primary semesters, the fall semester and the spring semester that run respectively um, end of August through the beginning or middle of December, and then um, end of January through the middle of May. Um, we also have what we call a winter session, which is about three weeks in the month of January, and we have a summer session options, um, summer session one, summer session two, and extended summer session. Um, the majority of undergraduate students will do the majority of their coursework in the fall semester and the spring semester. The, the other semesters are if a student wants to, you know, take a a uh, course and kind of speed up their degree program or catch up on something that they missed, um, or if they want to balance out maybe summer research that they're doing with, um, with, you know, a course that they're taking. So there are some additional options beyond the traditional semesters, but we're on a semester-based schedule. Um, so this is a question I'm, I'm not sure if any of us can answer, <laughs> but we'll try. Um, do Does Stony Brook allow students to switch within um, the, with the switch majors within the school, the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences? Um, does that happen from your perspective? We don't really, once a student's admitted, we, we don't really see what happens next often, so. Um, Steve, I yes. think it's happened in our department. Yeah, it, I know. Like few, like the two, three students have switched major within the engineering from mechanical engineering, for example, to chemical engineering. Mm -hmm. Does that add time, or does it really depend on the individual student? It adds time. It depends on how fast you do it. So. If you're, I don't know, I don't know exactly uh, um, until which semester you can switch majors. Um, but um, I know that the student that the students that I did it were like juniors. So some, you know, they have some common courses like thermodynamics, calculus, physics courses that are the same. But I, I guess maybe they can take like a couple of courses extra. Uh, I know they're going to graduate on time. Okay. Yeah. And I so think like that, they, they, they stay longer. Yeah. That might be where those summer sessions come in <laughs> where you yeah, have some, to make some up courses. Something. Yeah. 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 So those were great questions. Um, we'll give it another minute and see if any other questions come in. Uh, let me just open up the Q and A. I want to add um, one more thing to what Steve was saying. Our students actually, um, they have so many credits. Um, there's a lot of overlap in different disciplines within the College of Engineering. Some of our students are able to double major or they can have sometimes two specializations. So I think it's definitely doable depending on what you're switching to. I think it, it you know, can definitely be um, depending on the timing because some lab classes cannot be scheduled, for example, in the spring, they're only offered in the fall, right. they may need to stay one more semester. So it depends. That makes a lot of sense. Well, I want to say thank you so much to our panel um, and our presenters this evening and to our guests for joining us. Thank you to my co-host, Ryan. And um, we hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. 
and um, we hope to see you around campus if you're coming to Stony Brook. So uh, good luck with your applications and have a great evening. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Have a good evening. Thank you, Dr. Man. Thank you. Thank you also for the invitation. Bye. Bye. Have a nice night. Have a good Bye. night.